90.5 KTXG Greenville, Dallas. Provides a Christian perspective on current issues that are important to your family. Produced by the American Family Association, this monthly magazine is full of articles and stories about people who are making a difference in their community and around the world. Sign up today and receive a free six-month subscription. Visit thestand.net or call 1-800-326-4543. Intelligence officials warn that foreign actors may try to provoke violence after Election Day. Here's Fox's Kristen Goodwin. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence revealing foreign actors, particularly from Russia, Iran, and China, remain intent on spewing disinformation to divide Americans and undermine their confidence in the U.S. democratic system. Officials say they expect these efforts to intensify in the lead-up to Election Day, especially through social media posts, some of which are likely to be artificial intelligence generated or enhanced, adding this could include attempts to stoke protests or violence after November 5th. China, Russia, and Iran have previously denied such accusations. However, American agencies stress the U.S. voting system is secure. Kristen Goodwin, Fox News. U.S. intelligence officials have also recently revealed that Russia was behind a false abuse allegation against Democrat vice presidential nominee Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, circulated on social media. And Democrat vice presidential candidate Tim Walz was at a campaign stop in Madison, Wisconsin today. It takes stamina to run for president. It takes stamina to be president. And Donald Trump does not have stamina. He has been, he has been rambling more than the normal rambling. He calls it the weed. Former President Barack Obama was also there campaigning for the Harris Walls ticket. Former President Donald Trump hosted Latino business leaders in Florida as he makes a pitch for more minority voter support. Here's Fox's Evan Brown. Former President Donald Trump is leading a roundtable of Latino and Hispanic community, business, and political leaders at his golf club in Doral, Florida, outside Miami. Border security and human trafficking took up part of the conversation. They keep bringing up a phony bill. The bill, the bill was horrible. Two million people are allowed in. It was a horrible bill. Stupid bill. A recent USA Today Suffolk poll suggests a growing majority of Latino voters are supporting the former president over his Democratic rival, Vice President Kamala Harris. Early voting is underway in many states. In Broward County, Florida, Evan Brown, Fox News. Many Americans will be voting for the first time this election season, and that includes a well-known race car driver. Here's AFN's Chris Woodward. Danica Patrick told Fox News Channel that she has focused a lot of her time and energy on the sport of racing. That is until the last year or so when she began watching the news nonstop. Patrick also attended the recent AmFest put on by Charlie Kirk and Turning Point USA in Arizona. Tucker spoke, I, Trump Jr. spoke, Vivek spoke. There were so many great speakers, and I posted some pictures afterwards. Of course, it was very red, white, and blue. Red is also my favorite color. And I basically just said, I love this country. Patrick admitted that she is voting for former President Donald Trump calling it the rational, reasonable choice for what could be in the United States. If he gets into office with all of the amazing, brilliant people that are supporting him, I feel like it can not only be make America great again, but make America greater than it's ever been. Some voters are not fond of Trump, citing things such as his personality as reasons why they're voting for Kamala Harris or some other candidate. But Patrick thinks personality is not a good reason to avoid voting for someone. You don't have to go to dinner with them. You just have to like the country that you live in. Chris Woodward. The January 6th committee's key witness, Cassidy Hutchinson, went behind her own lawyer's back to help former Republican Wyoming Representative Liz Cheney with her investigation into the January 6th unrest. According to messages obtained exclusively by the Daily Caller, the messages were from Hutchinson to Alyssa Farrah Griffin, a former Pentagon press secretary during the Trump administration. In the messages, Hutchinson asked if the committee is going to make her testify live and asked Farrah to relay the plans of her attorney, Stefan Pesentino, to Cheney and the January 6th committee. That's a wrap on news for this hour. You can always find more news online at AFN.net. We do thank you for listening. For American Family News, I'm Robert Thornton.
Dr. David Jeremiah considers the royalty of Jesus, who will reign over a perfect world during the millennium. From the series, The Coming Golden Age, listen as David introduces today's message, King Jesus. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus in so many different ways. He's the son of the living God. He's the savior. Uh, he is the shepherd. He is so many things according to the Bible. But the Bible also tells us he's king of kings and lord of lords. And that really plays out into the millennium like nothing you can imagine. Today we begin the first of two radio broadcasts on the subject of King Jesus. Who is this Jesus who is going to reign one day for a thousand years? And uh, how do we know him as king? We'll get to that in just a moment. By the way, we have a very special offer during the month of October I'd like to tell you about. Uh, it's a bookmark, and the bookmark is called Imagine. And the bookmark reminds us of God's glorious future that awaits us, anticipates the coming golden age with excitement, and correlates with the coming golden age series that you're listening to on the radio. It's yours free for the asking when you contact us today. If for no other reason you want to get in touch with us, just say, please send me the bookmark, and we'll be happy to do it. Now let's get into our study today as we talk about King Jesus, the one who is coming to reign over all the earth during the millennium. There's an, an incredible interest and curiosity about royalty. They produced the life story of Queen Elizabeth II, and Don and I watched that series. It was amazing. The longest reigning monarch in British history and all the world paused when the word came of her death. Elizabeth spoke openly about her faith in Christ. One place in this movie, you see her talking to Billy Graham, who had been in London doing a crusade, and she invited him to come to the palace so she could interview him. In her 2011 Christmas broadcast, Queen Elizabeth said Jesus was born into a world full of fear. The angels came to frighten shepherds with hope in their voices. Fear not, they urged. We bring you good tidings, great joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. In that same message, she said, It is through the lens of history that we should view the conflicts of today and so give us hope for tomorrow. I like what she said, but I want to change just one word. I'd like to suggest that it's through the lens of prophecy that we should view the conflicts of today and so give us hope for tomorrow. History is important, no question about it. The Christian faith is grounded in historical facts. The birth, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's history, profound history. But anyone can look backward. The only ones who can truly peer into the future are those who study the Word of God and what God has said in Scripture. In the Bible, He tells us what's going to happen someday. And the same Jesus who died and rose from the dead will come again and reign in this world. And He will reign for a lot longer than Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth was on the throne for a remarkable 70 years and 214 days. But King Jesus is coming to be on the throne for a thousand years. And if it be all right with you, I came here today to brag on my king, to brag on King Jesus, because he's my king. And understanding the return of Christ and his reign and what's going to happen when he comes to this earth gives us a great deal of hope for tomorrow. When we see what's going on today in America and Europe and Russia and China, especially in Israel and the Middle East, we realize the history of our times is moving in a prophetic direction. Perhaps sooner than we realize, this world will be under the political control of King Jesus. If Jesus were to come in the rapture today, just seven years later, we'd be serving with him in the kingdom, ruling over all the earth. Not just Jerusalem, not just Israel, but over all the earth. The Bible presents Jesus not just as Savior, not just as Messiah, not just as friend, but Jesus is our King. And at this very moment, he 
he's already sitting on the throne next to his father in heaven making intercession for us but the bible tells us we enthrone him as king in our hearts now and one day he will literally be king over all the earth i want to talk to you about the glory and majesty and power and authority of king jesus and his kingdom He's the redeeming king, and we see that in the way he's addressed in the Bible. This is straight from the scripture, so let me just cycle through these names because they're all interesting. First of all, the Bible refers to Jesus as king of the Jews. That's interesting because it only is found in the Bible at the birth of Jesus and at his death. Remember at the birth of Jesus, the wise men came, said we have come to seek out he who has come as the king of the Jews, we want to know where's the king of the Jews. And then at his death, it was a discussion. When Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate, the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, it is as you say. Addressing the mob before him, Pilate shouted, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? What then would you want me to do with whom you call the king of the Jews? And their response was, crucify him. And Pilate handed over Christ for crucifixion along with a strange order for the executioners. He said, I want you to make a sign and nail the sign on the top of the cross. And this is what the sign said, the king of the Jews. That was our Lord's title in his birth and in his death uttered by the magi, the magistrates, the mob, the markings on his cross, and ultimately by the master himself. Over the years, I've made a little hobby out of collecting the strange things that people write on their tombs. I have a little notebook that has some of them. One of my favorites is this. Here lies the body of old man Peas, buried beneath the flowers and trees. But Peas ain't here, just the pod peace shall not went to God. There you go. That's actually on somebody's tombstone. My king is the king of the Jews. But the Bible tells us also he's the king of Israel. In a similar way, Nathaniel in John 1 49 said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And on Palm Sunday, when the men and women celebrated Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem, this is what they sang. Hosanna, blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Five days later, as Jesus suffered on Golgotha, one of his enemies shouted sarcastically, if he is the King of Israel, let him come down now from the cross and we will believe him. According to this and other scriptures, Jesus is the only rightful, everlasting heir to the throne of David. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of the Jews, and he's the king of Israel. And the Bible tells us, here's one I love, he's the king of kings. Do you think you're a king? Well, if you are, you're kinged over by King Jesus, because he's the king of kings. In Revelation, there's a beautiful picture of this. Describes Jesus in heaven just before he returns he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords and we live in a disturbed world men and women let's don't doubt that don't debate it we know better but none of today's politicians or leaders or villains or rogues will ever gain supreme authority not even the coming antichrist all will falter all will fail for only jesus is king of kings and lord of lords one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that my king is king of kings and lord of lords and then one of the things that surprises people about the kingdom the millennium the coming golden age is that it won't just happen in the Middle East, but when Jesus sits on the throne in Jerusalem, he will govern the whole world. He will be in charge of everything that happens on planet Earth. That's why 
His fourth title is King over all the earth. The prophet Zechariah adds this title to our Lord. He says, the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and in that day it shall be, the Lord is one, and his name is one. When King Jesus is king of the earth, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess he will rule over the entire world. Finally, he's the king of glory. The last royal title 